whistle blows, the whole town goes down the hill to the road. The boiler steam, the machinery screams down on Cannery Road. Wops and Chinamen, Portuguese too, down where the sardines flow. All come together when the whistle blows down on Cannery Road. Let's go down through the town, sit on a rusty old pipe. Well, they work all day to earn their pay, only to spend it at night. Let's go down, it ain't hard, oh, it's easy to tell. Close your eyes and lift your nose, you find the road by the smell. Fish boats full to the canneries pull, just an hour past dawn. God, you'd think that awful stink would make them wanna move on. Well, the sardines cleaned up the sardines steam, then they're locked in a can. There must be some better work, a better life for a man. The whistle blows, time to go, the machinery halts with a groan. The bums arrive about quarter past five, the pipe in the lot is their home. The lights at Flora's are turning on, the Chinaman's market will close. Doc has just bought an armload of beer, and back up the stairs he goes. Dusky old row has a friendly glow, don't you want to draw me? Flora's tarts are showing their parts, and Doc is open to beer. It's time to play the Victrola horn, a little Mozart or Bach. Time to talk, go by his ball, the beer has the key to the lock. The hours fly swiftly by, the lights in the lab are still on. Doc and me, drinking free, the beer has turned into song. Just because the thing's a lie, that don't make it untrue. Doc and I were drinking beer, Doc, I know it was you. Doc, I know it was you. Everyone who ever knew Doc Ed Ricketts had some kind of story to tell, some kind of magic glow when telling it. They say Doc loved true things. He was a scientist, a marine biologist by trade. He had a small lab near one end of Cannery Road during the 30s and 40s. It was a tiny wooden building with wooden steps running up to the office and study where Doc lived. The basement was full of fish tanks, bottles for marine specimens, and all kinds of junk. Well, there are a lot of lies, exaggerations, and half-truths told about Ed. But there is one thing that is true. Although the sardines have gone, and the row is decayed, rusted, and burned, and all but disappeared behind gawking tourists, metal campers, and Chamber of Commerce promotions, Ed Ricketts still lives on, in spite of his passing. I never met the man. Indeed, had I lived there in those days, I'd have been one of those kids who gathered cats for him for two bits a tail. But I did live there, and I knew him, knew him well. Now, I first came to the road six years after the Del Monte Express train had crushed Ed's old Ford and left him misshapen in the grass, trying to hold on to life. Oh, how that man of great vitality held on to life. Yet when I came to the row, I was drawn immediately to the lab. Nobody had to tell me where it was. I knew. It seems as if I'd been there. I climbed the stairs, peeked in the window. In those days, you could still see in. I saw the books, the microscope, the fish tanks, the old Victrola horn, the safe and the typewriter Doc loved so well. Ed Ricketts became my friend that day. Maybe a psychiatrist would say I was crazy, but Doc did become my friend, and the friendship has lasted. But who is this friend, this powerful man, this enigma that was Doc? Hey, did you hear? Doc pays a quarter for a cat, a nickel for a frog. Got to do something nice for Doc. Doc fixes up everybody. Oh, yes, Doc had a lot of friends. Friends right there in Monterey. Friends all over the world who knew of his scientific work. But in spite of all his friends, Doc must have been a lonely man. There was something in his eyes. Something lonely in his eyes. I never trust a man who doesn't drink, Doc would say. They're always putting their abstinences on everybody else. 
Doc wouldn't do that. He accepted people as they were. Their frailties may have fascinated or even saddened him, but it never occurred to him to feel superior or try to change them. Everyone was poor in those Depression days. Doc never gave a lot materially to anybody. Hell, he never had a lot to give. But people came away from the lab feeling like they'd gotten a great deal from Ed. He saw them whole, listened to what they had to say. Far more important, he listened to who they were, fascinated in them, as he had been with fossils and sea animals since a little boy. God, I make him sound like a saint. He lived too much for that. He expanded, let his mind and his body explore. They called him half Christ, half goat, part saint and part satyr. The lab lived a life of its own, cluttered and disorganized, broken dishes, empty beer bottles. Doc was a meticulous scientist, but he had too much respect for the living of life to cap it in a test tube. The books on philosophy were read and reread, the wine bottles emptied, the Victrola horn expanded and shook with the fugues of Bach, mellowed with the haunting Gregorian chants that beckoned Ed to a life in the spirit he could neither believe in or understand. No, and Doc never had to chase a girl, neither. They were always just waiting for him, one of them eager to follow him up the stairs. The tiny old metal bed shook and rattled with that particular use. The stories it could tell, if only it could talk. The conversation, the warmth, the laughter, the questions, and yes, the sadness. He could see a touch of sadness in the eye. Perhaps sadness that the world didn't live its life to the fullest. So much pain, sorrow, misunderstanding. Well, all kinds of people were drawn to the lab. The learned, the famous, the artists, writers, and scientists, but also the bums, derelicts, and horrors who inhabited Cannery Row in those days. Ed read the great philosophers, but he admired equally the tin can philosophers sitting on a pipe across the street, and dreaming up ways to con them out of a beer or a dime. He could argue affairs of state, and he could listen to the complaints of a disgruntled whore and offer the advice of silence and understand it. He saw people better and more capable than they saw themselves. And you know, a lot of them became better and more capable for having known him. Yes, sir, Doc fixed up everybody. Got to do something nice for Doc. As I think about him, there's so much I want to say, so much to feel. Once a question, my friend, right there in your eyes As you gaze down the stairs with a hint of surprise At the hunger, thirst, everyone who ever passed you by Knew you for a friend I once saw a tear in your eyes my friend, as you gaze down the stairs At a man who despised what he was Lonely, lost, wouldn't even kick a rusty can Never kick a man Now you put your notes away Now the evening swallow day Time for friends to climb the stairs Hear you talk of life Time to play the Victrola horn, time to laugh, time to mourn, time to watch a drink and there, are you still alone? I once saw joy in your eyes, my friend, as you gazed from a tide pool alive, alive in the dawn, watching me. Living like a fish on a shell, you knew them all so well. I once saw sadness, my friend, right here in my eye. Now that you are I've spent many hours laughing, crying, and drinking, listening to music in that cluttered lab. 
just as surely as I tell you about them now. Just as surely as the Del Monte Express train in the early evening rounded the corner and crushed Ed's old sedan and Ed's strong body, but not the life. It was so on Canary. 